From tradition to innovation, from colonial to contemporary, art historian Richard Love and his guests bring you the world of art on American Art Forum. Mickey Pallas is one of the best known photojournalists of the post-war era. Uh, although he was based in Chicago, Pallas managed to be anywhere in the world there was some important story going on. While he remains an active photographer today, he has really left the globe-trotting to the younger generation. Uh, Kenneth C. Burkhart, uh, curator of photography, photography for the Chicago Fine Arts uh, Office, and Janet Ginsberg, a photographer and writer, have co-authored uh, a survey exhibition of Mickey Palace's work. I'd like to welcome you both to American Art Forum. This is quite a show. Uh, I think it's a, kind of a mini retrospect, is it mm -hmm. not? Mm -hmm. uh, something which Chicagoans will know about, but really it, it, it could uh, gain some attention on the national level, couldn't it? I mean, it's that important. Very much, I think very so. much. Mickey Palace is known uh, to a national audience because of the fact that his photos were uh, seen in national publications. Yeah, actually, I think uh, probably what we'll find is that uh, a lot of the publications that his work showed up in may not have had as national uh, an audience as we would we would hope at this point and one of the reasons I think we wanted to do this show was to sort of remind people and bring to the forefront a large body of work that that didn't get as much rec recognition mm -hmm. uh, I think w what's important for people to realize is that not everybody goes to New York and not everybody goes to Santa Fe or you know and mm -hmm. takes up a hermit uh, kind of life we do have a solid uh, reservoir of great photographic uh, documentation as a result of mm -hmm. anywhere from the 20s onward Absolutely. and uh, as far as the post-war era is concerned now our audience has plenty to look at don't they absolutely very much what, what i was saying is that um a lot of this work hasn't really seen the light of day in 30 or 40 years is that right mickey uh founded gamma photo lab back in 1959 and so he is really in the Chicago photo community earned quite a reputation in the lab business. His son Rusty runs Palace Photo and they did all the printing for the exhibition. Um, and so Mickey's career as a photojournalist is something really only the old timers know. He was raised as an orphan as a result of, of having been uh, well a product of the of the horrible depression, depression. Yeah. and his parents weren't able to care for him and and then he became a, a jack of all trades he did many things I suppose don't you think that this helped to give him this wide interest in dexterity that that he uh, showed and professed the rest of his life very much he has a way with with people that's just wonderful he has a a certain sensitivity, doesn't he? I mean, he would perceive things that perhaps the average person would not, and then captures it. Mm -hmm. I'd like to believe that um, because of his childhood, somewhat, uh, it led him to seek out a lot of these kinds of things that he was documenting, documenting and seeking out clients that had a lot of action and a lot of uh, excitement to them, as well as, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, his, as you were mentioning earlier, his sensitivity um, comes through in everything that he did. One of his assistants uh, was Chuck Reynolds, who's a professor of photography at Columbia. And uh, when I was talking to Chuck, he said that he felt Mickey used photography kind of as a passport to really get to know and see all the things that he'd always wanted to see. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And you can see that he's almost a sounding board. I mean, there is something very special and unique before he chooses it, it is, as his subject matter. Why don't, we, why don't we talk a little bit over the photos right. and show the first one. This is a bat baton twirler from the M.B. Sachs Amateur Hour, Chicago, 1953. Oh, how everyone can remember this. The Sachs, I guess that gives away a little age, but uh, what a one of uh, an honesty and a certain sincerity and, and certainly typical of what was going on at that time. I, I like the quote that goes with this, and I can't do it, and maybe Janet can. Uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, I forget. It, it had to do with um, the, the sax hour being the, oh, the model. All the piano teachers yeah. and voice was teachers a sign and of baton success. twirler teachers. Apparently they had... Um, people vote on who were the best amateurs. And yes. so churches That's and right. schools would get involved with this and That's vote right. as blocks. 
That's the way it was. I can tell you that I remember that very much. Why don't we look at the next one, entitled Sugar Striker and Family at the Reserve in, in uh, Louisiana. Well, this one actually um, really liked this photograph a lot. Mickey was very involved with the unions back in the 40s. He was a CIO organizer. And this was from a sugar strike in Reserve, Louisiana. And one of the um, issues in the strike was desegregation of the pay lines and so on. So there were lots of pictures of this sort of uh, white worker and his family and then a black worker and his family. Um, white and black workers picketing together. So he would try to find the ironies and the contrasts, and, and he also sympathized, uh, and, and in that regard, he was quite a liberal fellow, wasn't he? He was extremely. Kind of he was very involved in all of this on both a personal level as well as a commercial level. Um, you know, it was fortunate he, that he could make his living by by still getting involved as a photographer and an actor. I wonder if there was any sympathies towards the older movement, the old liberal movement with the masses and the liberator that went on in the early part of the century around the First World War. I'd, it certainly has very much. It would hint I would from so. of it. Uh -huh. uh, the orphanage he grew up in was the Marks Nathan home on the west side of Chicago. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. And a number of people who went there, from what I understand, went off to go fight the Spanish Civil War. So I think that uh -huh. there was a, a something there that made people aware of a world at large and uh, good causes. And of course the Chicago uh, background for writers and artists anywhere from Art, Art Young to to Dreiser and so many you know the whole liberal movement began here mm -hmm. and went east to New York that's one claim Chicago has as being a, a very avant-garde mm -hmm. cultural uh, genesis uh, for for this for these ideas that began in the first part of the century. Well, let's look at a little lighter-hearted one, Mary Hartline, on Super Circus TV. Pardon? I was hoping you'd show this one. 1953. Uh, this is from. What a what a, what a wonderful document. Now I assume that in these uh, pictures, uh, which are uh, shown at the Cultural Center, by the way, this uh, for our viewers, uh, this uh, show went up on May 31st and will run until July 12th and. And, of course, what we, we want them to know is that, uh, that these photographs are not only wonderful images of, uh, of palaces, but also there's a certain reverie, a, a kind of a, oh, I don't know, a, a special quality that, that owes to a Chicago audience uh, perhaps a little more than a, than a national audience. Well, uh, I think what it is is that Chicago was sort of a, a, you could look at it as a microcosm of what was happening elsewhere in the country too and although this may heavily um, relate to Chicago um, I think anybody who would come from another city would see a lot of the same things that would relate to the 40s and the 50s. Let's look at another one entitled Woman at Community House Dedication in Chicago. Janet it must have been wonderful putting all these together. It was great I actually um started organizing this as a summer job when I was in college several years ago and I knew that the work was wonderful so it's been a real joy to be able to bring this to an exhibition stage. Let's look at Meat Packer and Union Member. Again, an earlier piece, 1946. This has a lot of the feel of the, the WPA work, um, which I happen to like a lot myself. I wonder what that is behind them. Well, I guess it doesn't matter so much. Let's look at Windy City Softball League pitcher. <laughs> Goodness, well, oh boy, this is one of my favorite. I can yeah. see. I, I, have, um, uh, I think we can expect uh, uh, that uh, these will conjure up some some very interesting uh, memories for our for our viewers who will get a chance to go to the show. One of the things we did with the catalog, which was a little unusual, I'm real pleased with, uh, went around and interviewed people who belonged to some of the black churches Mickey photographed, or from the refineries he worked at, or people who lived or studied the times. And throughout the catalog, there are quotes about the times or about the specific pictures by people. So there's more of a dialogue. Janet Ginsburg, how, how big is the catalog? The catalog is a nice size. It's uh, 32 pages. 30 some pages, yeah. right. And the cost is? About $10. The, the, anyone wanting to go to the exhibition at the uh, cultural center, the, the cost is nothing. It's, it's free. free. Right. Let's look at another uh, slide. This one, a female impersonator at Halloween Ball in 1955. Love it. We've only got a minute left, so let's quickly jump to another one. Family in a Buick in 1959. <laughs> this, oh, is part of a, this is part of a larger series. If you do come and see the show, that there will be 
oh, I need another dozen or so that work into this same theme, and it's just all about the American dream in the a 50s. A utopian theme it really and imagery is. in and the Wouldn't you the really 50s. rather have a Buick? Isn't you know? that something? And, of course, this one, JFK at the Democratic Convention. It's a poignant image. Oh, indeed. And the last one, Children on Mississippi River in 1953. Ooh, stark, realistic, and, and, and strong composition. What a show. Good what eye. a show. It sounds just to be a wonderful show. Again, let's repeat it. It's Mickey Palace photographs from 1945 to 1960, meaning post-war, of course, at the Chicago Cultural Center, uh, which opened on May 31st, runs to July 12th. It's been great having you. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Thanks. I wish you the best of luck with this show. It sounds great. great. Thanks. Okay. Well. I guess that does it for tonight's show, but remember, we're going to be back here again next week when we invite you to return to American Art Forum when we have new topics, new guests. Until then, have a great week. So long.